Hi there. Really great to see this many people. Um, welcome, a very warm welcome. My name is uh, Morton. I'm the uh, founder and the CEO of Ignito. And um, I have uh, gathered a small expert panel from, our, from Ignito to uh, answer if uh, there should be any questions that I can't answer. There'll probably be a lot. Um, yeah, sure, we're just going to dive into it. We are today launching our new um, uh, Rainmaker suite. It's called the Rainmaker. Um, it's the fifth generation of the software within uh, um, digital communication that we've done. It's, uh, it's actually following the same path. It's, it's, a, it's a fraud leap we're doing here, I think, and I hope you'll think the same. We've actually been doing, we've had the same aim ever since we started out, and actually before we started out. We started out in 2001, but the idea emerged in 98, where we had kind of started on the first generation of the software. Um, and the idea has been all along that this is about individualization, that we should move from mass communication and use the technology to get into, you can say, slim communication, really getting in and doing individual relevant communication, whoever we're talking to. Um, so that's been the idea from the very beginning. Now, as I said, it's the fifth generation, meaning that whenever there's been enough new technology coming on board, we have switched to that technology, and that's what we've done again. There's been a few things that's always been the same in what we're doing, and that is saying that in order to, um, to make this flexible, agile, fast, uh, to, to adopt literally on the fly when you're talking to your clients, we have to have a very, very open system. So, Ever since the beginning, ever since 1998, we've, we've been working on uh, totally open source so everybody can use it. We can have all agencies working in it. And this time, we're actually taking a step further uh, because the platform now, the heart of it called the Mobilizer, which is in the Rainmaker, is also platform agnostic. That means that when you do your content in that one and you order your, your content, you can publish it to any platform you want to meaning you can use Agneto as a front end, you can use iRep as a front end, you can use whatever front end you want to. All right, so before we get into um, the actual uh, presentation, I just will just say a very few words on, uh, on the background of this one. Again, as I said, the, the, the idea of what we're doing here is, um, is, is moving the technology further out and not just um, not just actually in terms of between the sales rep and the doctor, but also further out between the customer and the customer customer. So we can have uh, doctors talking to patients and even patients actually move all the way out to relatives, for instance. Um, the other thing there is, I think is very, very clearly is that obviously the products that you guys got are so complex that we need people to understand them. So we need to have the access, we need to get the um, we need to get the time, the quality time, you can say, with the, with the stakeholders. And that is obviously increasingly uh, becoming more difficult. We all know that. We've got more complex products uh, moving from, from chemistry to biologics. You do more promotions, demanding patients, more education, increasing administration, and so forth. I think that demanding patients is, is, is a big part of it. Um, I just had a daughter that was uh, hospitalized not that long ago. And I obviously spent a lot of time on the internet, first on Wikipedia, and then went deeper and deeper. And that meant whenever the doctor came, I had like a bazillion questions. And it just struck me at that time that I think most doctors today are actually spending more time on de-educating their patients because we all become doctors. We do our own diagnosis, and we also think that we can do our own treatment. Um, so that's another thing that, that's, that's working or happening, you can say, is that I think that the industry has to go much broader and not just talking about our products, but also helping our clients to talk to their clients to, to, uh, the, um, to empower the patients, you can say. All right, so just before I, I, I jump into the actual Rainmaker, I just want to show how we look at it, saying that, well, the first step on going digital was obviously that we moved from paper to glass, right? That we took all the campaigns we were doing before, we digitalized it and we put it into, into an iPad or, or, or another tablet. The thing is that that was just kind of the old way of thinking, right? That was just taking the same campaigns we were always doing and now we just digitalized it. So we did, still did three campaigns or four campaigns a year. It was just now electrified. But that was good. We could save some money. We could uh, print and distribution. It didn't really give any value to the customer, I will claim. Um, I would almost claim the opposite, that a lot of us 
have actually started out using it more as an amplifier, right? So we were just shouting louder with the iPad and not in any way making it more relevant. Then came like the next step, which is you can say closing the loop, where I think a lot of customers are now, that after we went digital, that also meant we could start tracking what was going on. The first tracking was the message delivery, so that was almost like putting a GPS on a city bus, so we could see whether or not the bus was following the route, we could see if they stopped at the stop that they should. It told us a lot about the driver, but not really much about our customers. I think as the content then became more rich, as we became better at making more engaging content, we could also start tracking the customer, finding out what are your worries, what do you like, what are you doing, and so forth. But that part is actually also driving the cost dramatically up. Because if we want to have rich data, we can't do it with a poor conversation. So therefore, the content is becoming, I think, for most of you, you can see that content is really increasing. That's one of the things that's actually stopping going to the next step. Because the next step is really to activate the loop. Because what does it help that we know everything about the doctor what does, or, or the customer? What does it help that we know that you like um, orange and blue, but you hate red, if I'm just coming back with red every time? So when we do closed loop marketing, we're almost like the waiter walking around and taking your orders and say, what would you like to have? What would you like to have? But we will say it's served the same dish for everybody because we're still doing four campaigns a year. The interesting part and the value lays in when we start activating this knowledge. I read somewhere, whether it's true or not, that the, um, that the American election, the last one, that the Democrats and Obama won, not because of big data, but because they knew how to use the big data. Because both of them, both the Republicans and the Democrats, really trolled everything and had a lot of data. But what they were so imminent at in the Obama administration or the, the uh, Democrats was to send out the volunteers to exactly the right doors, knock on that door, and when they opened the door, they also knew what to talk about, whether they should talk about Obamacare or tax or whatever. So what they, what they managed to do was to activate that information. And I think right now, I don't think we've done anything wrong, obviously. I think we need to go digital, we need to get the information, but it's worth nothing for the customer until we actually activate it. And that's what the Rainmaker is about, that is to say, how can we actually activate this? Now, what, there's, there's a big change, I think, in this, and that is to say the first two parts, uh, extended CRM and closing the loop, that's still the old enforcement thinking. That's still the way of saying, well, I'm going to do four campaigns a year, I'm going to talk about efficacy that quarter, safety that quarter, and so forth. That's and what we're tracking, and it's just enforcing it down. The problem is, of course, that if you are sitting in New York, um, what, what do you know about a local doctor in Helsinki? Almost nothing. And what we have to do in order to give value is to get to what I call empowerment, to move the decision, to empower people downstream to make these decisions. It doesn't mean that all reps, all doctors should be marketeers as well, but it means that we as marketeers should give the tools that enable people further downstream to make the right decisions on what to deliver. Obviously, within a compliant format to all the rules that you have. Okay, and that is moving all the way out. Um, I will show you that in a minute, is that what we're doing here is the idea of moving further downstream and have a provisioning um, methodology where you can say that you from headquarter can say this is what you're allowed to do. We open up for this must on a regional. In the country level, you can do this. On a territorial level, you can do that. On a sales rep level, you can do that. On a doctor level, you can do that. And then actually give it all the way out to the doctor. So if the doctor is sitting with a patient and saying, well, I know I've just diagnosed you with diabetes and you haven't been listening. Let me put together a microsite for you. I'm going to give you a microsite where you can see about uh, um, the disease understanding, how to treat it, why it's important, and so forth. And then I can ship it off right away and give him that information. So again, coming back to also the story I was telling about my own daughter with the uh, um, de-education that we can move it much further out. All right. So this one should actually be read from button up. So we say that if today, if our sales reps are message delivery people, then they have to step up and become engagement and co-creation uh, um, 
if we look at the regional and national, if what they're doing today is enforcing and doing a message implementation, we should move them up to do multi-channel and rep empowerment. If we look at global marketing, the marketeers should take a step up from being message, logistic and enforcement to be global strategies and make the tools take their knowledge and put it into bottles so we can have people much further downstream make these decisions, not on a global level, but on a micro level. That's the idea. So kind of said in a popular way, if the sales rep was the deckhand before, he or she has to step up and become the captain. And if the marketeer was the captain, he or she has to step up and become the admiral. Okay, let me um, just start with the presentation. Okay, the Rainmaker suite consists of three elements. It consists of the mobilizer, which is the heart of it, which is the management tool where you build or you assemble your presentation, you structure, you, uh, you publish, and so forth. So that is purely for managers, but that can be managers on all levels. So you can actually also, when you get further downstream, you can have a, have rip as a, as a manager, and then of course he or she won't have the same access um, as the one sitting upstream. Um, so it's the mobilizer, it's the front end, which is uh, called the engager, uh, which is the tool that you will use when you actually run the wrap, um, the app. And then you have the, the, the last part is called the revealer, which is the analytic part. So all the data that we can capture will go to what's called the revealer. As I said, the, one of the nice things here is that the mobilizer is completely platform agnostic. So let me show you here. So it's, um, it's a software as a service. So you can have more users at the same time. You just go into the mobilizer. And the picture you will get is something like this, right? This is my repository of presentations. Um, I obviously have, so I can make the model, the structure of who's allowed to do what, give uh, uh, access and provisions and so forth, and the same I can do with users. I'm not going to go into that. You can build it here directly, say this is how I want to set it up, but you can obviously also take it from other systems and just uh, embed that into this system. So what I'm going to focus on is the content part, because we truly believe that one of the biggest problems in going individual is exactly the content. If we see the price of the, you can say the fuel cost is immense now. So a lot of companies have done to save some money. They've sent it out to India, which is a great idea, but the distance is very long and it doesn't change that we're still doing campaigns three or four times a year. And we should do it almost daily or weekly or by the minute, if that's what's necessary. So I can, I can uh, if I look at my presentations, I can filter it in all the ways I want to, geographically, department, countries, compound, and so forth, and also which platform the presentation is actually made for. This also means that you can have agencies that only need one piece of software and then can actually uh, uh, work uh, across platforms. It also means another thing, that all the content that's been made from the agencies goes up to your server meaning that the assets will actually be yours and so much easier to, uh, if you want to change uh, agency now and again. Now, um, if I look here and I just take a presentation, I'm just gonna take this one. Now, if I click on a presentation, I get some information about the presentation, about the versions, the category, the history of it. I can see where it is in the, in the process, what's in design, if it's in editing, if it's in approval, it has been uh, retired and published and so forth. So I have full history of it and see what has been done. Now, I'm just going to give you a glance of this, right? Because obviously we, we're going to be at the booth and we only got like 20 minutes now. Um, so so if you, we can dive deeper into it later if you want to. Just let me show the design part. So now I have a presentation been made by an agency. Now I can see all the pages in that one. I can look at it in a different view. So on a storyboard level, so I got all my chapters, and underneath my chapters, I got my paragraphs or my, my, my pages. Uh, and now I can just move things around, right? So I can take a copy of this one and say, well, I actually in this one, I want side effects to be higher up. I want to move this entire chapter one step up and so forth. So I can very, very easily, everything is what you see is what you get. I can move around my content. I can also zoom in on the individual page. So let's have a look at this one. That will tell me something about the tagging. So it will tell me what, what, uh, what metadata has been put onto this one. And I can double click on it and actually go into that page. So now I've got this page and I can start working on it. 
Because what I have is that I've got the source code. So I can see the exact source code. I can see that in HTML, in JavaScript, or CSS. Um, I have my assets individually, each one of them. So I can start changing, moving assets. Um, I'll show you that, or I'll give you an, an idea about that when we get to the multi-channel part. I can um, localize, meaning that I can take all the text in any presentation and isolate it and take it out and send it to a translation agency and then they can do it and can put it back in. Or I can just have the Spanish guys to translate the, um, the, um, the English version. And I can edit it directly in what I'm doing. So if I look here, Ramipan, a new mode of action, I will actually be able to see that one in my code. You see Ramipan, a new mode of action. So if I want to go in and say, let's change this one and say, call it an old mode of action instead. And then I go back to my source, then you will see now it changed to old mode of action. So the, the very interesting part here, I think, is that the coding is actually made visual. So it's very, very easy, very, very simple. You don't even have to be, you don't need coders for this. You don't need, or not in the same amount. And you can actually have, you can do it yourself. Your local product managers can work on this level. Now, I can also another, you can say another break on going, on going towards this activation has actually been closing the loop, meaning capturing the data. Uh, because we've seen very often, we work with more than 200 agencies across the globe, and, and we see very often that when they make presentations, they don't do the tacking or they do the tacking wrong. So we, re we only get the digitalization, we don't get, really get the data. So we also put into this very, very easy how, in the coding, how to make the tagging, and actually how to look at the tagging. So if I take this presentation and look at it as a preview, now I'm in a preview mode, and then I can start uh, looking into the presentation, and I can go through it, say, well, then you can choose this, then you can choose this country, then you can... Uh, a bit further, then I'll ask what gender and what's the age or whatever. And what I can do is I can constantly, as I build my content, I can look up and see, is this being tagged right? Do I get the tagging? Is it actually working? So I can see the reports immediately. What we also need, so because when we talk about individualization, we need two things. We need uh, that it, it's digital, obviously, so we can very easily put things together that's uh, valuable, relevant for the individual. But the other thing we need is to deliver it in the context that's important for that person. So if we are to make a dosing calculator, then it does really matter whether this has been done in a pharmacy, in a back office, or it's been done by the bed and by the doctor, depending, again, what device should I use. So what we've got here is that we've put it in so you can actually, it's all made in what's called responsive design. So it will uh, adjust to the format you choose. So I can look at it as a iPad um, landscape view. I can look at it in a web, like a microsite. I can make it into a smartphone. And obviously, if you look at it, you can see that, 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 that on a smartphone, that can't hold all that. But then again, if you notice that all my assets uh, are workable. So I can take my assets and say, yeah, this page, if I want to use this one on a smartphone, I actually maybe need four pages instead of one page. But I can go in here, I can crop my, my elements, I can take new elements and put it in. So depending on what you're doing, but you got at least half of the job done, you can say. The other nice thing about that is that it's all connected and related with each other. So that means that if I make a microsite here, or enable the rep to make a microsite, for instance, and the microsite then with the doctor put together a tailor-made microsite or app, for that sake, to the doctor, and he downloads that, then again, I can track further on and see what is being used, what's not being used. All right? I think we're going to switch to the, uh, unless I've forgotten anything. Have I forgotten anything? I don't think so either. So we're going to switch to the uh, to the engager, which is the front end. Um, Martin is going to go through that one. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you a little bit about the interface, how easy it is to work with. And then what he's going to do is that he's going to create a microsite um, and then uh, show that microsite. Uh, oh, sorry, 
create a microsite in the, <laughs> in, in, the, in the tablet, and then we'll go and see it afterwards. We'll go online directly. Right? Good. Please. Thank you, Morton. So yeah, I'm just going to show you some, some very quick uh, examples of, of how simple the Engager uh, is to use. This is the iPad version I'm showing. We also have a version for the Surface, the Windows 8 Surface. But basically, you'll see here a dashboard. This is where we estimate that most of your sales reps will actually spend their time. It comes with a, a ribbon of contacts at the top, in the center, a ribbon of content. And at the bottom here, we have this empty ribbon, which I'm in that, about to populate with uh, a call. And I'll show you just how easy it is to plan a call. So first of all, I need someone to show my content to. So I drag a contact in, and then I need somebody, to, uh, some content to show to that person. So I drag my content in. Then I move it over here, and that's, thank you. That's my call planned. And I can keep on doing more of these, so I can set up my entire week with all the different calls that I want. And for this particular call here, maybe I want to change the time, so I can just adjust that here. So I have this second call all planned, but maybe they telephone me and say, actually, I can't make it. So it's very, very easy to just delete the call again. And for my call that I haven't deleted, of course, I can just go straight into it very, very quickly. And now I'm in my content. So call planning, uh, the organization of calls, creating them, deleting them, very, very straightforward, very, very simple to use. And Morton mentioned about the uh, microsite functionality that we have. So let me just show you, um, uh, again, exactly how this works. So I take a piece of content, and I take a contact, And then I, sorry, that was the wrong one. I launch my presentation. This is just dummy content. But in this particular tab, we have a selection of items we can discuss with the doctor at a later date. We, maybe we ran out of time. We select our items. We enter the doctor's email address, which is uh, here. And then it generates an email for me very, very quickly. And you can see within the body of the email are the four items that we agreed to discuss. And I send that to my doctor. And he opens his email account. And here we can see our email that we've just received. And I can open that in my web browser now. And here we see the exact topics we, re we, we requested. And remember, we're now viewing this in a web browser. We're not in the iPad app anymore. So that's a very crucial difference because now you're putting the, the power to look at this in the hands of the doctor. So if he wants to look at this in his study on a Sunday evening, following on from the call that you have with him on a Thursday afternoon, he can do that at his leisure on the device that he has. He doesn't need an iPad. He doesn't need to do it at a specific time. Just very briefly, we have other uh, what we call workspaces down the left here where we can manage our content, our accounts, and our calls, which we can see in terms of history. And I can see the slides that I've shown to a doctor on a previous visit. That concludes for me, Morton. Thank you. So what we showed here was what you would probably do in front of a, a customer. That's a really bad um, um, But what you could also do, as I said, is that you could take this one step further out. Because right now, you can make microsites. Within two months, you can also make, um, you can also make apps. So you can decide if you want to. You can actually sit together with a doctor and say, what is your problem? Is that uh, compliant? And then we can make a compliant app together with the doctor, putting that together, that he can actually push out to his patients. Okay. That was it for now. Thank you so much for coming. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.